Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. So as you can tell from the title, today I'm going to be talking all about my trip to Thailand. So if you haven't seen my previous vlog, I will leave that link down below. Um, but I'm sure most of you will know by now, especially if you follow me on Instagram, that I went on a Gals Who Travel trip to Thailand last week i got back and honestly it feels like a lifetime ago but also it feels like it was yesterday it was really weird i vlogged the whole thing there's loads of like content on my instagram so go over and check that out and watch the video if you have time because it is quite a long one um it ended up being about 50 minutes in the end so i hope you guys enjoyed it yeah today i thought i would sit down and answer some of your questions purely because I just wanted to talk about the trip a little bit more in detail for any of you who are interested or had like questions about the trip or questions about Thailand questions about how I found the trip personally and I'm going to be totally open and honest and transparent in this video um, and I'm going to tell you my honest thoughts about the trip whether I would recommend it and yeah just give you guys a little bit more info about what I got up to and how I found the whole experience so I asked over on Instagram for you guys to send me questions and I'm I'm gonna answer them i feel like there isn't really a chronological order that i can answer these questions in so i am just gonna answer them as as i read them i'm gonna try not to rant too much about each one and if you have got any other questions or anything that i've missed off this video then leave it down below in the comments and i will obviously get back to you or send me a dm on instagram or something whatever works best for you i've honestly i've actually had loads of people reach out and ask me questions about the trip which I've yeah I've really enjoyed I've loved talking to you guys about it and like giving my recommendations and stuff so always always reach out if you've got something you want to know so the first question is would you travel solo now the reason I did this tour to start with also I'll leave information down below about the girls who travel tours and the Thailand tour specifically which is one that I did because I feel like in this video I don't need to go into detail about um like the itinerary and stuff like if you're interested you can go and read that for yourself I don't want to repeat it and I don't want to bore people so if you are interested I'll leave that down below um so yeah I've wanted to go traveling for a really long time now it's always been something that I've wanted to do and I obviously still want to do because I've only been to Thailand so it's not like I've actually gone traveling traveling um but I never kind of was with any one or like had any friends or anything like that that really wanted to do the same thing as me and then I never wanted to go alone because I was like I don't want to go to the other side of the world by myself like that's too scary and also I love the idea of like the independent part of traveling by yourself but also making memories with people like I honestly think if I went somewhere by myself I'd be bored within a few days so yeah I, I've always wanted to do it but I didn't really want to go by myself and then I followed Bronte, who is the like founder of Girls Who Travel. I followed her on Instagram for a really long time. And for like quite a while now, I've always seen her content pop up about the Girls Who Travel trips. And I was like, oh, I really want to do that. And I think it was like last year, maybe September, October time. I literally was like, something is telling me to just book one of those trips. Like I just need to do it because if I don't book it, I'm never going to do it. So I sat down with my mum and dad and I was like, I'm going to book the Thailand trip. And I just booked it all there and then. And then I had like a mini meltdown and cried and I was like, oh God, what have I done? I've actually just booked to go to Thailand. Like this is mental, but can safely say best decision I've ever made. So yeah, I think that was the perfect way to travel by myself and like have to get to the destination on my own. Like I've got so much confidence now from traveling to Thailand on my own. It is crazy. I feel like I could conquer anything. Um, and I definitely have the confidence now to kind of, go to a few places on my own maybe if I want to like maybe around Europe or something I probably wouldn't go as far as Thailand on my own but yeah I think that is such a good way to do it if you want to have a little bit of independence but also when you're there you're with people and like you can go off and do your own thing like some of the girls on the trip were really independent and like didn't necessarily come and do stuff with us all the time they would like wander off and go do their own thing for the day it's very flexible you can kind of do what you do what you please on the trip so um yeah I wouldn't personally travel completely on my own I don't think don't hold me to it because you never know um but yeah I just think this was the perfect way to do it alone but with people someone asked is there an age limit on who can go absolutely not um I so I'm 26 and when I booked it I was really worried that I was going to be like one of the oldest ones there but I was completely wrong um the youngest in our group I think was like 21 and the oldest was 30. So the majority of us were around my age. It was like mostly like sort of 25 to 30 year olds, um, but definitely no age limit. Like it just depends what, like what kind of age of people you want to 
hang around with. And I've always thought in my head, like, I think from the age of maybe like 24 to 30, you all kind of just feel the same age anyway. Like age was not an issue at all. And it didn't even really get brought up. Like we didn't really even discuss it. So um, there's definitely no age limit. Someone said, did some of the groups stay on traveling onwards after the tour ended? Yes, they did. And I'm so sad about this. So when I booked it initially, you have no contact with anyone and you only get put in a group chat a few weeks before the trip. So you don't really know what who anyone else is or what anyone else's plans are. Now I... I don't know if it's me being naive, but I just assumed that people were going to do what I was going to do, book onto the trip, go and do the trip, and then come straight home. That's what I assumed everyone would be doing, but I was so wrong. There was 13 of us in our group, and I would say half of them, if not more, stayed on to do more travelling afterwards. Um, and I learned that a few days in, I learned it very quickly, and I was like, oh god, I'm going to get such bad FOMO, I really want to stay, so I actually planned on changing my flights and staying out there longer, um, and I like got the time off work, and my mum and dad were like, yeah, yeah, that's all good, so I was like, oh my god, I'm going to change my flights, I'm going to stay out for like another week or two, and then the next morning I woke up and I had the worst like illness ever it wasn't the worst ever but I was really poorly and that went on for like four days so I think that then put me off and I was like I just need to go home annoyingly I would have been fine by the time the the tour rolled around and it was finished I would have actually been all right to stay but I can do it again in the future you know um I think that was just my my body telling me to come home yes a lot of them did stay on so what I would recommend is if you want to do one of the gals who travel trips and you are keen to do a bit more traveling rather than just the tour, because I feel like it was a very long way for me to go and I was pretty much only there for a week. So it would have been a lot more sensible to stay on for a bit longer and get a bit more of Thailand done or like other places around it. Um, I would say there will be people on your trip that are staying after. And if you're feeling brave and you're feeling confident and you don't necessarily mind too much about having a set plan, I would honestly recommend booking your flight out there for like when the tour starts or like the day before. Um, and then give yourself like an extra week, like just do it. I really wish I had because I could have then gone on to a few of the other islands with the girls and then flown back. Um, so yeah, if you want to do more traveling, definitely book a ticket home for like a week or so after. The next question is, was it safe? And did you have a tour guide, etc.? And how much money did you need? So was it safe? I can honestly say to you, and I wouldn't lie about this because I'm like a bit funny about safety and like I'm a bit of a chicken. I felt so unbelievably safe the whole time we were there. There wasn't a single scenario that I was in where I felt like unsafe and I felt like I couldn't like couldn't have been on my own. Like I genuinely felt so safe the whole time. And now don't get me wrong, we weren't staying in hostels and things like that. It wasn't your typical like traveling experience. It was very luxury. Like we stayed in really nice hotels and we were all pretty much together most of the time. However, I did honestly feel really safe. And if I had to have done like a bit of time there on my own, I think I would have been absolutely fine. So yeah, I definitely felt safe in Thailand. And did you have a guide? Yeah, we did have a tour guide. Oh my God, he's in my vlog if you want to see who our tour guide was, it literally makes me want to cry when I think about it. We had a guy called Max and he was from Thailand and he was honestly amazing. He was so fun. He was the best tour guide we could have asked for. And we literally, well, I cried when he left. I don't think anyone else did, but I cried. He was just so much fun and honestly made the trip like a thousand times better. And like, to be honest, it did make it a lot easier having him around because he like booked restaurants that he knew were really good. And like, he could recommend us places for everything. And obviously he was there to translate as well, which isn't necessarily a problem. But if we were to go out for food and like someone had like dietary requirements or they wanted like a burger, but with something removed out of it, he could just translate that easily and get it sorted. Whereas if we were trying to do it in English, there would often be like a bit of a mix up. So it was super handy having him with us. And he did just make the trip really fun. And I think one of the best things about it is that everything is just planned for you. Like you don't have to decide what to do or like figure out how to get from A to B. Like it is just all sorted for you. So it really is the best starting point if you want to do a bit of traveling. So in terms of money and how much money I spent on the trip, obviously you have the like upfront cost of the actual trip, which you can find all the information about down below. Cause I think the prices do differ on that depending on what month you go. Then you have the cost of your flight, which you pay separately. Like you book all of your flights and stuff separately. So that's totally up to you how much you spend on that. And then honestly, when you're out there, people say it, but like things are so cheap. Like 
honestly so so cheap and I so I took my Monzo card with me and then I also took out 200 pounds worth of cash so it was 200 pounds worth of Thai baht which I think was like 8,000 baht um and I assumed that I probably wouldn't really use cash and that I would just mostly use my card I was totally wrong I used cash the entire time I think I used my card once or twice because most places you go don't accept card and most places you go if they do accept card like 7-eleven supermarkets they have a minimum spend and because things are so cheap it's really hard to spend that amount so I actually used cash pretty much everywhere I went and for so I was there for like it was like seven to eight full days of like spending money um and that's buying like a lot of your meals all of your snacks and drinks and water and like alcohol and then any souvenirs or like things that you want to buy at like markets and shops and stuff like that and i took the perfect amount with me i didn't have to take out any more cash yeah i literally took the, the perfect amount so I, I spent 200 pounds when i was out there um so yeah it's pretty pretty cheap but it's up to you you can kind of spend as little or as much as you want to spend um did you have any jabs before going if so which ones and how much did they cost so with jabs and thailand it's very um much one of those things that's just up to you like you don't have to have them there are no jabs that you have to have to go um it's just a personal preference thing but personally i wanted to be safe and i was like i'm just gonna get them done so it's just peace of mind so you can either go through your doctors and you can get some on the nhs i'm not sure which ones they are but there's like your classic i think maybe like tetanus and stuff like that you can get that on the nhs or you can go to a private clinic and get it done. And to be honest, I went to a private clinic just because I couldn't be bothered to try and get appointments at my doctors and try and get them to work around the time. And like, I just thought that if I went to a private clinic, they would really know what they were speaking about. You know, that is literally their job is to give people jabs for traveling. Like they know what they're on about. And also I'm glad I did because they timed them perfectly so that when I went away, they'd be at their peak like level in my immunity. And I feel like the doctors wouldn't have done that. And there were ones that I wanted to get done that the doctors couldn't offer me. So I was like, I'm just going to do it in one place. So I had, if I remember this correctly, I had rabies. I had my tetanus, diphtheria and polio one updated because I hadn't had that since school. And then I had hep, either A or B, I can't remember, hep A. And then one other, which I can't for the life of me remember, but it's something to do with um, food poisoning. So I don't really know if that one worked or not because I had awful food poisoning. <laughs> but yeah, so they were the jabs I got. But like I said, it's personal preference. Do your research and do what works for you. I know people that went that literally had no jabs at all and then others that did. So yeah, it's totally up to you. Next question is very random, but how does your WhatsApp work with a different SIM card? Okay, so with the whole SIM card situation, I was really like confused about this before I went because you have a few options. You can either obviously use your current provider and just pay a lot more money which i was like don't really want to do that um or you can buy a physical sim card out there in any of the supermarkets and put it into your phone which again i didn't really want to do because i was like i don't want to risk losing my actual sim card when i take it out and sim cards are tiny so i was like don't know if i want to do that or you can get an e-sim which i opted for now i used um this app called airalo it was really easy honestly it was so much easier than i assumed it was going to be you choose which like sim you want to have so i literally went for like southeast asia or thailand or whatever it was and then it was like a 30 day sim card or something and it was like 15 pounds so you do that and then when you arrive in thailand you go onto the app you download the sim card onto your phone and then you go into your settings and you literally select which sim card you want to be using whether it's your like normal sim card and then it will show your number or your new sim card with your new number and you can like label it so i just put like traveling card or whatever so you switch those over it's honestly so easy and then your phone works like complete normal and obviously with whatsapp you that kind of is through the internet anyway like you get that through wi-fi or 5g or 4g um but i honestly didn't have a problem with it the entire time it worked everywhere i went i could send whatsapps i could send texts i actually don't think i made any phone calls i mostly just use whatsapp um but yeah it was literally fine and it was so easy but if you have got questions just give me a shout because 
I was also very like, what if my phone doesn't work? But it's literally fine. Uh, what did you use to avoid bug bites? So I'm quite lucky in this sense and I don't really get bitten. Like I'm not a person that tends to get bug bites. Um, and I actually didn't get bitten the whole time I was out there, but some of the other girls got awful like mosquito bites, like really bad. Um, so I think I'm actually just not a person that gets bitten. So it was quite easy for me, but I did use a bug spray that you can get in 7-Eleven. It comes in like a pink bottle. Everyone buys it. And that's pretty much what I used. And then I also bought these um, little like wristbands off Amazon that you can put on. And especially when we stayed at the lake on the second night, I put them around my wrists and around my ankles and they have like natural scent in it that mosquitoes don't like or something. So um, yeah, that is what I did to prevent bug bites. Do you think it's worth the price for just nine days? So I'm going to be totally honest in this little section although i've been honest the whole video but i'm gonna be really really truthful with you guys so i can't actually remember the exact amount the trip was i think it was like 1200 which i get is quite a lot of money like you could definitely go to thailand by yourself for a lot longer stay in hostels and spend a lot less money however i personally think that the experience was so worth it because you stay in really nice hotels, you get to experience things that you wouldn't probably experience if you went alone. Um, and you know, things like going to Khao Sok National Park and staying on a floating bungalow, like that's not something you get to do every day. And the whole time I was there, I kept thinking to myself like, God, I don't really know how I would get around and like get from A to B if I was here alone. And everything is so planned out for you and so sorted. And there is a lot of traveling involved. Like some of the days you pretty much do spend just traveling from A to B. Um, and again, like, yeah, trying to figure that out by myself, I would have no clue. So I do honestly think it was worth it. You get some meals included, but not many. Obviously all of your accommodation, all of the activities, like we went out on a boat trip for the day and had like lunch, we went to all of these different islands, we went snorkelling, like if you were to do that I'm pretty sure that would cost quite a lot of money, like we did some activities that I know would be quite expensive and I just, for the overall experience you get and all the people you get to meet and like you know you've got a tour guide there 24-7 who you can whatsapp with any question, any issue, he literally becomes like your best friend I do think that it, it was all worth it. The only thing I will say, which I didn't really kind of compute until I got home, and this isn't me being negative or like saying that it's a bad thing, but I just think it's something to bear in mind. The tour is like sold as a nine day tour, which technically it is, right? But by the time you fly out, so I flew out the day before the tour started and I arrived on the day that the tour started, but I didn't get there till like early afternoon. And then I kind of chilled by the pool for a bit with some of the girls, got to know them. Then we had dinner and went to bed. And it's like, that counts as one of the nine days, which fair enough, like that's fine. I do understand why that would count because it is the first day of the tour, but it's only really like half a day. And then you've got your seven full days with everyone, like doing activities and stuff. And then you wake up on the ninth day and then everyone goes and like goes home and does their own thing. And I literally flew home like that day. So it's like... I only technically had seven full days of doing stuff. And then the two other days on either side were like little bits of a day and like traveling. So just bear it in mind, um, it isn't necessarily nine full days. Cause I was like, wow, like nine days is quite a long time. It's actually seven. Like it, you get seven full days with everyone. Not me complaining. I'm just saying bear that in mind before you do book it because I hadn't really thought about that in my head. So the trip went a lot faster than I thought it was gonna. Um, so yeah, just something to bear in mind. Someone said, do you feel like you spent a lot of time traveling between each place? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot more traveling involved again than I thought, but that was just me being naive because how are you supposed to get from one, one island to another without traveling? Like you're gonna spend time traveling. Um, I will just say that I feel like this is a good time to slot this in. If you don't like boats and you're not good with boats and the sea, I would think twice about booking it because you spend a lot of time on boats. Now, I actually don't love boats. Like I'm not great on them. I do get a bit seasick, but I took like medicine and I had these little like wristbands and I had patches that I put on and I was fine. Um, and by the end of it, I was actually really used to it. And I was like, oh, it's another boat. It's cool. But there is a lot of boats involved. Like there's a full day where you spend the whole day on a, like a speed boat essentially, which was so fun. I loved it. It was one of my favorite days. Um, and then there's a lot of like long tail boats, which are fine. Like they're on a lake, they're not choppy, it's, it's all good. 
but then you do go on like a two hour ferry which I found quite tricky um and yeah there's there is a lot of traveling involved there's a lot of like sitting on a minivan for four hours going to one side to the other but it is all part of it and like if you go traveling anywhere that is going to be the case so yeah there is a lot of traveling involved but I just think that is just part of it somebody said how did you settle into the holiday quickly when knowing nobody so it is a really bizarre experience and obviously nothing like I've ever experienced before um I literally arrived at the hotel and then I went and went down to the pool and met a few of them and we just clicked instantly because I think everyone there is for the same reason it's because they want to do a bit of traveling but they don't necessarily have anyone to go with and like it is mad how close you get with people when you are spending so much time with them in such a short space of time. Like so the girl that I was like paired up with to share accommodation with was called Alice. And honestly, by the end of it, I was like, we were literally like, we're best friends. Like she, I, we, be we became so close. It was actually crazy. Like considering we'd only known each other for like seven or eight days, it was like I'd known her a lifetime. And yeah, like, everyone got on so well and I'm not just saying that there was like a few people that were quieter than others and didn't necessarily get involved as much um but you're going to get that in a group anywhere like whether that's on holiday or not like everyone has different personalities but it just worked so well and there's always somebody that wants to do the same thing as you like it was yeah it was honestly amazing and like even that first day when we were down by the pool, like sunbathing, I was like, I'm literally sunbathing with a complete stranger I've known for an hour. We're sat here having a beer together, laughing. Like, it's just, yeah, it was honestly like nothing I've ever experienced. And I just think everyone needs to experience something like it. Um, someone said, how did you make friends out there? Or like, you know, blah, blah, blah. You, like I said, ev nobody knows anyone. Like there were two, no, there were four girls that knew each other. So like, two girls knew each other and another two girls knew each other but apart from that everyone else came completely on their own complete strangers um and I'm glad I did like I'm really glad I did because it forces you to get to know everyone and forces you to like step out of your comfort zone and make the effort and chat to people and get to know people and honestly it's mad how quickly you figure out like who your people are my friend Hayley has asked how many times did you nearly shit your pants Quite a few times if I'm honest with you Hayley. <laughs> um, this is a good question, would you say it's suitable for weak swimmers? I'm anxious. So like I said there's a lot of like boats involved and a lot of water activities but honestly like I am not a water person, like I'm not someone who enjoys going swimming in the sea, like I would never jump off a boat into the water, like I don't like going underwater, I'm also not a very strong swimmer, like if I was just dumped in the sea I probably would drown, um, but you genuinely don't have to be that good at swimming because every time you go in the water, whether that's at the lake at Calstock National Park or whether it's on the day of the boat trip or anything like that, when you're in the sea, at all times you have to wear a life jacket. So thank God, because all the other girls were literally like, oh, this life jacket's so annoying. I just want to take it off and swim freely. And I'm there like, yeah, I totally agree. I'm literally like, thank God I've got this life jacket on because I would be drowning otherwise. So honestly, like no one even has to know, but you can tell your tour guide, like if there's any problems or anything beforehand, you can tell them and they'll make sure that like you're always feeling comfortable and they'll do everything they can to help you. But genuinely you have to wear a life jacket every time you're in the water anyway. So please don't let that put you off. What else have we got? How many girls are on the trip? Well, it, it's different for each one. I think it's like up to 20 maybe but on my specific one there was 13 of us so the last question i'm going to answer is what's included in the trip so i do think the best way to figure this out is to just head to the girls who travel website and have a look at the tour you're interested in and it does list everything that's included um, and it also breaks down the itinerary like day by day and it tells you what meals and stuff are included so i would just say go and have a look at that to be honest with you i feel like that's the easiest way um but i hope this has covered a little bit and I hope this has been helpful to any of you who are either considering going to the Thailand trip or one of their other trips um and if you've got any other questions at all even if you think it's silly like leave it down below in the comments and I'll get back to you or send me a message on Instagram like I said but yeah I honestly 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 had the best time ever I haven't stopped talking about it since I got home haven't stopped thinking about it like I'm still messaging the girls that I made friends with that are still out there and literally like 
it makes me so sad um but yeah i'm definitely going to do something else in the future like it because it was just like i said and i keep saying the best thing ever so yeah thank you for watching i hope you're all doing well and i will see you soon with another video goodbye